Hello students, welcome to today's session. So in this session, we are going to start chapter 3, Concepts of Objects and Classes. So we will be going into details of objects and classes. How are they related? And uh, I will also be showing you how to implement the concepts which I'm going to discuss in this series of videos in coding. Okay, so whatever I discuss, I will put it in the form of coding so that you will be better able to correlate the concepts with the coding and hopefully you can write a good Java code. So let's begin. So what are, uh, what are the topics to be covered in this chapter? First topic is objects. Okay. Second is class and why class is known as object factory. Then we have class as a user defined data type. Then message passing between objects. And finally, working with BlueJay. So working with BlueJay, I've already covered in the previous video in quite detail. So if you haven't watched that video, you can watch it. Okay, so this topic working with BlueJay, I'll not be covering again because it's already done. Okay, what is an object? So everything around us is an object okay everything you can take anything so for example people vehicles buildings streets mobiles televisions you can name it okay everything everything each and everything around us including ourselves can be classified as objects okay now you pick any object, that object will have some property, some attribute, okay? Like for example, take yourself, you'll have properties associated with you, attributes associated with you like your name, your age, your gender, okay? These are some of the examples of attributes, okay? So every object will have some kind of attribute associated with it okay and the other thing which an object will possess is the capability to perform some action okay and for example if we take the if you take a, if you take a bird okay so bird is an object what kind of action can it perform it can fly, it can dive, right? It can build nests, it can hunt, okay? So these are the few examples for actions of a bird. Now, whenever an object performs an action, okay? So that action will have some effect at least on the object itself or on another object okay or on both okay so what do you mean what do i mean by uh, an object's action having some effect on another object so for example if we uh, take uh, bird again into consideration uh, let's say the bird is uh, building uh, the bird is building a nest okay so for building a nest it will pick up uh, straws from here and there right so straws straws themselves are objects right so when the bird object is acting on the straw object okay so the change is occurring in the straw isn't it what kind of change its position is changing okay its position is changing previously the straw was somewhere else but the bird has picked it up and 
taking it to the place where it has been building its nest okay so that is what i mean by uh, the statement that when an object performs some action it will have some effect either on itself or on another object or on both okay so i hope we are clear with this point here and we need to uh, we need to remember this point because this point we will be revisiting when we discuss when we discuss uh, message passing between objects okay so this is an important point please remember it okay okay next so do we have just a single type of object actually we have mainly we have two kinds of objects okay tangible and intangible okay and then we can further classify objects uh, into roles and events okay but mainly we have tangible and intangible okay so tangible object means what tangible object means that's a object which can be seen and touched okay that is ten tangible like for example a computer is an object which can be touched it can be seen okay a piece of stone is an object because it uh, it's a piece of, it's, it's a piece of an object tangible object because it can be seen and touched so there are many examples okay you can think of a few examples yourselves okay right so what are intangible objects the second kind ones okay intangible objects they may or may not be seen okay but definitely they cannot be touched okay for example email bank account okay so you can you can see your you can see your email okay right but you cannot touch it okay similarly you cannot touch your bank account okay you can perform some enquiry upon your bank account okay you might be able to see it also but you cannot touch it so this is the example of intangible okay okay uh, so the next uh, type of object is roles okay so roles means what uh, roles mit means it's a role played by certain objects okay so for example a teacher plays the role of teaching a farmer plays the role of farming a soldier plays the role of fighting isn't it so all objects or at least some objects will have some kind of roles associated with them okay so this is known as roles and the last one is events okay so an event object okay so what is an event object an event object is something that occurs in a system or an organization okay so for example let's say you have a shop okay and you are the shopkeeper so and a customer comes to you okay then you'll you'll sell something and the and the customer will buy something right so there is an event taking place two uh, in fact there are two events taking place one is purchase and the other one is sale so this is event based object okay so i hope we are clear with tangible intangible roles and events type of objects okay so these are just conceptual classifications when we actually write code will not be will not be writing different codes for these four these four types of objects okay this is just for our understanding okay it is not that for creating a tangible object you will write one piece of code and for intangible uh, intangible objects you will write another piece of code it's not like that 
okay uh, this point will become more clear when we come to the actual code okay so don't worry about it okay next okay so now the most important point okay you must be able to identify an object okay the first thing you must be able to identify an object like what kind of object is it then you need to identify its attributes okay and you also need to identify its behavior as we discussed earlier that every action uh, every object will have certain action right so two things attributes and behavior you have to identify okay so let's let's look at a few at a few examples like in the previous slide we saw the examples of uh, the examples of people vehicles buildings isn't it so see people vehicles buildings streets mobiles televisions these were the some of the examples now let's dive deeper into these examples and uh, let's find out what attributes and what actions these objects can perform okay okay so just give me a minute okay so okay so here are the different kind of objects you can see okay let's see the first one the first one as you can see it's a car okay so it's a car so type of the object is that it's a car isn't it what are the attributes associated with it the attributes are name model weight color that is name of the car model of the car weight of the car color of the car okay so these are the properties or attributes remember attributes attributes associated with the car object okay the see the last column the last column is having the actions that car can that a car object can perform okay so what kind of actions can it perform uh, you can see that it can uh, the car can start it can stop it can drive it can brake it can reverse it can go forward it can go backwards okay so there are many other actions belonging to the car object but we have just listed out a few here okay let's see the second example in the second uh, second object okay the second object you can see that there are people right so people what kind of what kind of attributes are associated with people you'll have name age address educational qualification okay so many kinds of attributes can be associated with people isn't it so these are the attributes related to people now what kind of actions they can perform again there are many but we have just listed out a few the uh, like singing dancing read walk okay so these are the examples of actions that people can perform okay third object third object is buildings isn't it so buildings what kind of attributes what kind of attributes is associated with buildings so number of floors number of exits color the material with which the building is made so this kind of attributes are associated with buildings isn't it and what kind of actions can a building perform so look at the last column close door close window lock main gate the building can collapse right change color you can change the color of the building okay so this is 
these are the actions that a building can perform okay right let's look at the next example streets so streets what kind of attributes are associated with a street with length material of which it is made number of entries into the street okay so these are just a few examples associated with a street okay now look at the last column uh, that is the type of actions that a street can perform the first action i've listed out is drain water isn't it when it rains the street must be able to drain the water okay so that the water is not logged on the road okay so drain water action then develop develop pothole okay see a street might develop a pot, pothole so that's a kind of action okay then when a pothole occurs the street can fix the potholes okay so this is another kind of action that can be performed on the street okay and last example i've given is accommodate cars okay the street should accommodate cars okay so these were a few examples related with streets okay street actions okay so up till here all the objects all the objects are tangible objects isn't it all the objects up till here up till the streets examples they are tangible now let's look at an example which is intangible object okay so last one okay bank accounts bank account is what it's intangible okay so the kind of attributes associated with a bank account are name of account holder type means account type either it is salary account or savings account or uh, current account okay then the branch then the gender of the account holder so these are the kind of attributes associated with bank accounts now let's have a look at actions that can be performed by bank account okay so withdraw deposit close account open account transfer money so these are the options associated with actions for bank accounts object okay so you should be able to clearly vis uh, visualize and identify attributes attributes okay attributes and their actions okay so let's go back okay now so why objects okay why are we talking about objects okay we are supposed to learn java isn't it so how is object relevant to java okay so let's see why do we need objects okay so software java we are learning java that means uh, our aim is to develop softwares in java right now what is a software so software is basically when you take a real world problem okay you take a real world problem and you come up you devise a digital solution okay you devise a digital solution for the problem okay that digital solution can be performed by a computer okay so again i'm repeating software basically means taking real world real world problems and coming up with a solution right so if in real world we have we always deal with objects so wouldn't it be best if we are somehow able to implement those objects directly into our code conceptually okay so, so, uh, because it will be easier for the client for the person who needs the software and for the person who is who will develop the software it will be easier for the person to develop the software 
and it will be easier for the client to explain his problem his or her problem okay so if in the future if you become a software engineer or a software developer okay and a client comes up to you with a problem the first thing you after analyzing the problem statement of the client the first thing you'll do is identify the objects okay identify the objects that are relevant to the client's problem okay once you have identified the objects then the next thing is you'll identify the attributes attributes and behavior of the objects which you just analyzed okay so that is why object plays a very important role while designing softwares okay especially in java okay because java is object oriented okay now what are the components of an object see mainly uh, we have three components that is identity state and behavior okay and the last one which you are seeing is attribute okay attribute it's not highlighted the rest of the uh, the rest of them are highlighted isn't it so that's because uh, attribute is related with state okay attribute is not something independent so that's why remember that we have three components okay identity state and behavior okay now identity means the name of a particular object okay suppose uh, suppose if i have uh, two dogs in my house okay so two dogs both are dogs but i'll have let's say one of the dog dog's name is doggy one right and the other uh, and the second dog's name is doggy two okay so that is what is meant by identity okay next is state okay state so if our if uh, we have just taken an example of dog object okay so let's uh, understand what a state of a dog object might be okay so state means the attributes okay now see state and attributes i am correlating both of them see dog will have what kind of attributes uh, it can have gender it can have breed it can have um, color okay is it hungry so these are some of the kind uh, some of the examples of attributes related to a dog object okay attribute notice that i'm using the word attribute these are the attributes a dog object will possess okay so what is the state then okay so state means when you give certain values when you associate certain values with the attributes okay suppose name of the dog is doggy one color of the dog is black okay is it hungry yes so you can see that i have associated doggy with name doggy one with name is it hungry i have associated yes value with it right and i have associated black value with its uh, with its color attribute okay so when you assign certain value to the attributes the attributes are known as states okay so this is the, this is the relation between state and behavior okay uh sorry i i mean uh, we, this is the relation between state and attribute not state and behavior okay i'm sorry behavior okay behavior okay again behavior means what it's just set of actions that a dog or an object can perform okay so i hope you are clear with this let's look at the next slide next slide is what is an object okay uh what is uh, i've taken an example here okay so i've taken an example of of hammer object okay so let's uh, let's 
look at it okay so first see the first the first diagram okay what what is it showing state okay notice here state this is the state and so state you can see that it's written here it's a grade one hammer okay then it's a steel head okay so these are the attributes okay attributes or states related with the hammer object okay behavior okay the next uh, this one okay behavior okay so you you can see what will be the behavior or action that can be performed by a hammer obviously pounding nails okay so you can see in the diagram that the action uh, is being performed is pounding okay and lastly the last diagram or the last block you can see we have got identity okay identity so look carefully in the diagram okay you can see that there are many hammers all these are hammers okay but each each hammer that you can see each hammer will have its own unique identity okay each hammer is different from the other although all of them are hammers all of them are hammers but still they will have their own unique identity okay Th that identity which will distinguish one hammer with another let's say let's say how can how can this be done let's say this hammer is hammer one this hammer is hammer two this hammer is hammer three this is hammer four see like this so when you give a name to an object okay that is known as identity okay so i hope it's clear what is the meaning of identity state and behavior okay okay now f now let's look at yeah let's look at the uh, the components which we discussed like attributes behaviors uh, and identity how it is actually implemented in java code okay how it is implemented in java code you must be able to correlate whatever we have discussed so far in actual coding okay not just theoretical understanding you should be able to translate your concepts into code right so that is the final thing we are going to do for this session okay okay so let's take the example of student class okay so you you can see here that i have created a class called student okay student class right this is student class inside the student class you can see that i have got attributes here remember what kind of attributes a student can have there are many attributes but for for keeping things simple i've just taken two attributes that is section of the student and age of the student okay so string section int age don't worry about the string and int now okay just focus on section and age so section will be storing the section in which the student is studying and age will be storing the age of the student so remember this is what this is attributes okay and finally i have created two actions okay so uh, attributes you understood right how we can implement attributes in code so this is this is how you can do now coming to behavior or action okay identity state and behavior we have already seen state okay now we are now we'll look at behavior okay so i've just used two examples student can study student can write exam okay so these these are these are the kind of actions a student can perform okay 
so these are what behaviors okay so state is done state is done behavior is done okay now let's look at identity okay so identity so look at this line here look at this line here okay i am creating an object okay uh, an object by the name of ankit okay and ankit is an object of which class student class okay ankit ankit is an object of the student class what do i mean by this just like hammer 1 okay just like hammer 1 okay hammer 1 is an object of the hammer class okay hammer class this is our hammer 1 this is our hammer 1 hammer 1 is an object belonging to the hammer class similarly similarly ankit is an object ankit okay ankit is an object belonging to the student class right so once i have created an object okay by the name ankit this name can be anything so that is known as what that is known as identity okay identity giving a name to your object okay okay now finally let's see state okay state you know what are attributes right when you assign values values okay like a and 15 you are assigning you are assigning a to section okay and you are assigning age of 15 to age okay so ankit's section is a and ankit's age is 15 okay that means now you have associated values with the attributes so the attributes has become state now okay in other words in other words state is associated with the actual object okay so state state is associated with the actual object that is ankit okay so state okay this is the state this is the state value of a and 15 being assigned to section and age okay this is what this is state okay and you can say that the attribute attribute is something which belongs to the class the it's the general specification that will be followed by all the objects of a particular class okay so let's say i'll let's say i create another student i'll create another student let's say uh, by the name of uh, ankita okay so now i have two uh, two objects of the student class right one is one is ankit and one is ankita we have already defined uh, ankit's section and ankit's age okay now we can similarly define the section and age of ankita as well okay so as soon as you create an ankita object okay its ankita's state will come into existence okay ankita will have have certain section and ankita will have certain age okay but the specification but the specification the class itself okay the class itself the class itself will have no uh, the class uh, the attribute which is placed in the class will not have any values it is just a it is just a template 
that has to be followed by all the objects of the class okay so i hope this point is clear okay, if you have any doubt you can you can ask me okay okay so we'll stop here for today's thank you students